everybody. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This is our family, and we are off grid on Friday. Okay, go for it, babe. Stick forward. Woo! That thing's got some kick. Woo! There she goes. Yeah! So, Scout and I are going to go ahead and create something that makes it possible to tow your portable generator uh, behind your ATV, UTV, or vehicle. Uh, I'm in, kind of throwing something together through some parts that I found from Lowe's. I got various parts. I've got the hitch coupling. I got some different parts and assortments, uh, different angle irons, different things like that. I'm gonna use this two by four on the ground. I'm gonna cut a bunch of stuff up, bolt it together and see what I come up with and hopefully it's something useful for you. So materials, one two by four, I'm gonna cut into several different pieces and I'll show you that'll kinda transform itself as we go. We're seeing more evident what I'm trying to do with it. I've got a hitch coupler right here. Just got this at Lowe's. Got my Mark I powered wood saw here. And I've got four different bicycle hooks, right? These are for bicycle storage. They're each rated for 75 pounds. I'm hoping working together, they're gonna to be able to work, like, roughly they should hold 300 pounds, right? That's the idea. Um, that's their intended use. We'll see how well it does with my 200 pound generator when it's being towed behind my vehicle. So the two by four is gonna be the arm and the attachment that I'm gonna to attach to the hitch coupler. And I'm gonna attach these bicycle hanging hooks to the two by four. And what that's gonna do hopefully is be able to kind of hook underneath and then attach to the coupler raising up the front end of my Furman generator I got from Costco. It's a 9,500 uh, surge wattage, I think 7,500 wattage, whatever. It's the one that's at Costco right now, if you check. It's a pretty good generator. It serves all my needs. It powers my well, it powers my RV, everything. I have a uh, 50 amp service well and a 50 amp service RV. I haven't tried them both at the same time. But separately, it powers them both very efficiently and also powers everything inside of our rec room or what I'm starting to call our lodge because Karina is making me put a wood stove in it. So I don't know if you can see my assistant right here, but he's going to be helping me at least morally throughout the whole process. I also have uh, some hex bolts. These are four inch by three eighths and the associated lock washers and washers. These are the angles I was talking about. I'm going to brace together when I make that T. So the T is basically going to tee up like this. The four hooks are going to come out. There's going to be the, the long end of the T is going to come in and couple two two by fours cut in half, sandwich that in, and hopefully that's going to be able to meet all the weight requirements, right? It's not going to be absolute rugged use, but I will be going up and down my uneven roads. But luckily that generator already comes with some mounted wheels that are pretty durable. I won't be doing any crazy off-road things. I just don't want to carry it up and down the hill. 300 yards each time. It, it's a lot at that elevation for me. So I got some more L brackets here and then we'll just see how this works out. Uh, you ready Scout? Me too. construction materials. It's kind of his favorite. Yeah, he's a good boy. I haven't decided whether or not he's smart yet. I love him. We're working on the those kinds of details. So, <clears throat> 15 inches a piece. I It's kind of a honky-tonk engineered piece of equipment. So what that means is I took some really rudimentary measurements when I was up at the property. The generator and the UXV, my Kimco, are not here but I just kind of piecemealed this together based on those measurements. Hopefully, I'm not a real engineer. I'm sure most of you have gleaned that, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these 
jam these two by fours inside here. Kind of look, use them like vertical joists, right, for the, the long in the arm. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm probably going to make that about 14, I'm sorry, 18 inches wide for the other T end. So this will be hooking into the hitch. This will come out. Those four hooks will be on the back. Kind of hook them in, hook that up, and see where it goes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure out. This is how I measured. I'm going to measure out from here to here. Basically, whatever this length is, I'm guessing it's roughly 18 inches. My own measurizing tape. It is 18 inches. Shazam. And I'm going to go ahead, cut two of those. And I'm going to attach these all together, drill in the holes. Um, hopefully, I have a functioning drill. My drill is up at the front. Well, actually, both my drills that I normally use are up at the property. Um, I've got some of my dad's drills from the 70s. We'll see if they work. Uh, if not, then I'm gonna finish this up at the property and this will be a short day on this side of the project house. Um, anyway, these scouts here help me. Decker drill. It works. Uh, it smells like electrical dust. May not last long. Uh, and I don't have a chuck key, so this is just going to be great. Um, all great things. But basically, I'm going to start drilling into this right at the area that uh, I want to put some holes. We'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one first. Let's see what we got. Chuck keys work. Not the right size. Yeah, at all. So I'm making a bunch of rookie mistakes, right? Number one is measurements. I roughly remember what the measurements were. I think it was approximately eight inches that I needed to have of a gap on the bracket of my um, generator, right? There's a lower bracket. I'm trying to hook these up to the lower portion of the frame. And there's a bracket in between where the two stands go. And I think they're roughly eight inches apart. If I remember, that is Shazam Shazam, roughly that, and I'm not sure, but I'm going to place these two hooks, right, I'm going to take these two, I had another hook, here's an extra, and what I'm going to do is set it up to where, I'm going to have one right here at the farthest edge near the bolts as, as much as possible, and then I need to have to the enough room to rotate the second one and hopefully you can see this but you're gonna have to screw this in so I'll screw this one in have this one in place on the line that I drew right here and on the line I'll have one here and while it's there I have to have the closest line right there and in between the two areas there's got to be roughly eight inches of space it looks like I'm gonna make it hopefully I'm remembering correctly I was doing a lot of other jobs up at the property and I didn't do my due diligence to write down the measurements so I'm going off of a pretty foggy memory so this could end in a lot of wasted materials and time we'll see but uh, like I said before I kind of throw things together and if it doesn't work I readjust so hopefully I'll be able to readjust and get this project done to where it's effective and useful for what I needed so I'm not carrying that 200 pound generator up and down these dirt roads by hand.
we start putting together what I'm trying to create here. All right, this is gonna hook up underneath my portable generator, lift that front end up just enough and let the back wheels do the work. So this will be, the hitch will come this way. So that's where we're at. This gap is just eight and a half inches. I really hope I did my homework properly. There's a good chance I didn't, but we'll see when we go up to the property this weekend. We'll, uh, we'll work all that out. It is what it is. I do have a drill. I have the generator up there so I can fix it. I will bring these scraps of wood. Um, I'm hoping I won't have to. I'm hoping this is something that is going to be a blessing as soon as I get there. But if you believe in luck and you look at my track record as far as what you would perceive luck to be, I'm usually not that guy. But we'll see. We will see when we get there. And uh, all right, on to the next phase. What I'm going to do is start attaching these pieces of wood. To the hitch coupling. Once I touch these to the hitch coupling, I'm going to attach them all together with those braces and then boingo boingo hopefully we're in business. Now to create my towable, or to complete my to generator towable device creation. I don't know if I put those words together correctly. Either way, to, to complete this up, I'm going to go ahead and marry these together with all those brackets. And then probably throw in a long, if I can get a lag bolt, it's long enough. I don't know if I have a six inch lag, lag bolt, but we'll see. Hopefully this all comes together smoothly though. So let's see if we can finish this up before dinner. I think we're done for tonight, so here's the deal. I'm gonna showcase this. I'm not gonna call it pretty, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, 75, 75 pound capacity bicycle hooks times four, right? These are about seven bucks a pop at Lowe's. This cut up version of the two by four is six bucks and 42 cents at Lowe's. These screws I already had, I had some like little lag bolts and these little wood screws I used roughly 30 of those, right? Four or five on these brackets, these L brackets here, these corner brackets here. You can see that. I'm sure you noticed during the sped up version that I was using the blue uh, ratcheting screwdriver that we keep in the credenza in the house for all the little jobs like getting batteries and things out of toys. Um, but both my drills, like I said, are up at our property. And the drill I do have, you saw me using successfully. I was able to tighten it down. Now I'm not able to take that drill bit out. So I just used a little bit of elbow grease because why not? It worked. I, these were self-tapping screws. I put a lag screw in here, lag screw in here, and looks like it turned out okay. To uh, bolt through here, bolt through here to kind of sandwich together. Like I said before, like if it doesn't fit, I can fix it uh, up at the property when I do actually do proper measurements and actually try it on the generator itself. The bummer is I had to use a little bit of glue for these two bolts to 
kind of keep them in there and seat them and just have that little bit extra gumption to keep all these things together. Uh, it probably would have been better to have a much longer bolt or something like that, but I just kind of, I'm kind of a fly-by-night engineer, which means I'm no engineer at all. So with that, the only thing left to do tonight to make my wife happy is not to showcase whatever this is, we'll call it a towing generator T. The last thing to do to make the wife happy is to clean all this mess up. So let's do that and wrap this up for the night. Okay, moment of truth. I don't know, it's a pretty tight fit. If I go in there, let's see here. Let's set this thing up. All right, let's see if we can successfully put this thing on here. Hey, buddy, come here to help. Push it up. What do you think, Jake? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. It's on there. Let's see if it toes. So here it is, all hooked up, ready to go. You just hook up the uh, little gin buddy here. Nothing fancy, but it's working. And what I do with this cross brace for this exact model is I bring this, this is actually the carry handle right here. I bring it, I put it right there. I'm gonna put a block of wood here because it's gonna tear up this handle. I'm gonna actually do that right now. But it, uh, dude, it works. I'm very happy about it. Very, very happy about it. Let's hit up. <laughs> 